What's up guys? So I know on YouTube there's quite a few tutorials on how to make boost converters, but as far as I've seen they're all based on either microcontrollers like Arduinos or on dedicated ICs that do the heavy lifting for you basically. So what I'd like to do in this video is uh, create a boost converter circuit that only relies on simple components and is uh, hopefully easy to understand and uh, works relatively well. Okay, so let's take a look at the circuit and we can build it in the meantime and understand how it works. So the first thing we need is our PWM and for that we need a clock input and I'm gonna choose a 20 kilohertz uh, square wave with a very high duty cycle and for that I'll use the values you can see here and the output's gonna be at pin three. That will be fed to a second 555 timer which is in monostable mode, but it's a different one than the classical one. I explained this circuit in my previous tutorial. And um, if you've seen that, you'll notice that there's a missing RC circuit here. And that's because if we power the whole thing at more than three volts, there's a range between one volt, which is the maximum um, voltage at which the reset pin is active, and uh, one third VCC, which is the maximum voltage at which the pin two trigger is active, at which uh, trigger is active, but reset isn't. And so we don't need that RC circuit. In any case, on the rising edge here, we will activate the output. And after a given amount of time, uh, based on this control input here at pin five, the output will go back low. So this will generate our PWM signal. So we can add that to the circuit and you can see that the output is a uh, simple PWM with some random duty cycle. And if we use a potentiometer to change the voltage at pin 5, you can see that the duty cycle changes. Now we can proceed to uh, add the real boost circuit and for that we just need an n-channel MOSFET um, check the the voltages for the gate you need a VGS on that's lower than what you're feeding it but uh, the gate has to be able to withstand whatever voltage you give it here so 12 volts should be fine for about any MOSFET and then you have to choose a coil I found that at 20 kilohertz to get an impedance of about 10 ohms you need a, an inductance of about 100 microhenries. And if you have a higher frequency or you want more power, you can reduce this value by a little bit. Now, if you're like me and you just pull off coils from random electronics, uh, you probably don't know what the value is. So if you want to just have a rule of thumb, choose one that's toroidal and that has a few dozen turns on it, at least. I chose this one here. Uh, for example, the other ones that are just a, a straight rod with 10 or 20 turns on them are probably not enough. You can see this one, for example, is 5 microhenries, and I'll use it for the output filter here. So this is a random silicon diode. If you want to use a shot key, you'll have a higher efficiency. So for the output capacitors, I kind of chose random ones as well. Don't fall into the trap of saying, well, I'll power it with 12 volts, so I'll put a 15 volt cap at the output and forget that the output voltage does uh, rise quite a bit, then it'll explode on you. So this is the actual boost converter without regulation. And if we uh, attach a load, for example, on the output, you can see that the voltage drops and that's because it's not regulated. So the next thing we have to do is create a feedback circuit to be able to regulate the output. So we'll use a comparator here that compares the output voltage, which is reduced by a factor of 90%, and it compares it to our input with the potentiometer, which uh, receives a five volt fixed uh, input here. So that if we change the input voltage here, say that it's a battery that drops a little bit, the output will stay constant uh, no matter what the input is. So let's imagine that uh, the output drops and this is going to feed a lower voltage to the inverting input compared to the non-inverting input. Thus the output here will go high at pin 5 and increase the duty cycle. 
This will increase the output voltage, which uh, corrects the previous error. Instead, if the output is too high, then the inverting input will have a higher voltage than the non-inverting input, which will drop the control voltage and also reduce the PWM duty cycle, which reduces the output voltage. So this is a feedback loop that uh, regulates itself, basically. Now, for example, if we attach or detach the load here, you can see that the output voltage uh, remains constant. Um, but if we probe the PWM signal on pin 3 of the second 555, you can see that the duty cycle changes to regulate, as we were explaining. And also the input current to the supply um, also varies a lot to be able to keep up with the demand on the output. Alright, so hopefully you enjoyed the video, maybe you even found it useful. If you think it earned it, you can subscribe and leave a like. If not, in any case, I'd like to know what you think in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.